Okay, so our first example of this reaction, we are going to use this reaction, 1-methylcyclohexene, and we're going to react it with mercury acetate in water followed by sodium borohydride. This is a pretty straightforward example. We're going to add a molecule of water across the double bond following Markovnikov's rules. So we're going to put the hydrogen on the carbon that already has the most hydrogen present of the alkene. The bottom one has the most hydrogen present, which means the OH group is going to go on the other alkene carbon. Give us this product right here. Another example seven membered ring. I don't know why I choose to make myself draw this seven membered ring. And it's an alkene with a chlorine group present. And for this one, we're going to react it with the mercury 2 acetate and methanol CH3OH followed by sodium borohydride. Following Markovnikov's rules, both of the carbons in this alkene have one hydrogen, so we are actually going to get two products for this reaction. One of them where the hydrogen goes on this carbon and the uh, OR group goes on to the other, and then vice versa. Remember we talked about that in class on Monday, how if both of the carbon atoms of the alkene are just as good have the same number of hydrogens on them, you're going to get both possible products. So we are going to add the OCH3 group to both of the carbons in the alkene, not both at once. We're going to make one product where it's been added to one of the carbons, and we're going to make another product where it adds to the other carbon. Again, that's a pretty straightforward example. And now let's practice doing some predicting the product or predicting the reagent type reactions. So let's take this alkene, uh, one butene, and let's convert it to two methoxy butane. So you know from this reaction that you can add an OR group, you can add an OCH3 group using the alkoxymercuration demercuration reagents. So in this case, we want to do a step one where we add mercury 2 acetate and the alcohol that we want to add has this as the OR group. And then our step two always is the sodium borohydride. Next example. Let's take 3-methyl-1-pentene and convert it into 3-methyl-2-pentanol. You have now learned two different ways to convert an alkene to an alcohol. One of them is the um, oxymercuration demercuration reaction, and then the other is the acid-catalyzed addition of water to the alkene. Remember that the acid-catalyzed addition of water does have the potential for rearrangement in it, in the mechanism. So when you're doing a reaction on paper, like in this particular case, and you're, you're adding water to the alkene, and you know that you're doing a Markovnikov addition, like you are here, we want to put the uh, the oxygen, the OH group onto the, the right carbon, that it would be Markovnikov. 
you know that you can make that transformation take place without rearrangement using the oxymercuration demercuration reagents. And on paper, you should always just, just default to that. If you need a Markovnikov addition with no rearrangement, go straight to the oxymercuration demercuration reaction. That may not be what you want to do in lab. You know, if you have a choice between working with mercury or sulfuric acid, you would definitely want to choose the sulfuric acid because it's much less hazardous and it's cheaper to dispose of and et cetera, et cetera. But when you're doing it on paper, there's no hazards associated with it at all. So go ahead and choose those reagents. You actually couldn't do this transformation the way that you wanted with the acid catalyzed addition of water because you would get rearrangement. You'd make this carbocation, which is secondary, and then you'd get a hydride shifting over here to put the positive charge down on this carbon and your OH group would end up going here, which is definitely not where you want it. One last example from this section. Let's take that's an iodine, not a hydrogen. Let's take this molecule and convert it. to this one. So this is going to be it's going to be a multi-step process. We've got to get rid of the iodine and we've got to put an OH group on the molecule and we're not just swapping one out for the other. So you can't do like an SN2 reaction here and just attack this with an iodine and swap out the, the iodine for an OH group. You've got to actually put the OH group down onto a different carbon that the iodine is on. So it's going to take a few steps and again like we talked about in on Monday when you're doing this type of synthesis and you can't see directly from the reactants to the product. Start at the product and go backwards. Ask yourself, do you know how to make an alcohol? You do know how to make an alcohol from an alkene. So if we had an alkene, let's say with a double bond right there, or you know, right here, same spot, you could put this, you could put the OH group on. Um, and then so then go back to this. Do you know how to convert this? halogenated alkane into an alkene. Yeah, you learned that in chapter seven, how to synthesize an alkene from a halogenated alkane. So that's what you want to do. Take this reactant, get rid of the iodine and put a double bond onto the molecule. And then from the alkene, add a water molecule. And you're gonna end up with your alcohol. We're gonna write this out step by step because this is a little bit tricky. And we're going to use a base to turn this uh, halogenated alkane into an alkene. And you learned in Chapter 7 a bunch of different bases that you could use for this transformation. I'm going to choose methoxide because it's one of my favorites. Remember what happens is you're going to pluck off a hydrogen that's adjacent to the carbon that's holding the leaving group. The leaving group is the iodine. So we're going to pull a hydrogen off of either this carbon or this carbon. Remember that we're going to follow Seitzef's rule to create the most substituted alkene. So if we pull one of these hydrogens off, we're going to put an alkene here. And that alkene is going to be 1, 2, disubstituted. If we pull this hydrogen off, we're going to put an alkene here. And that alkene is going to be 1, 2, 3, trisubstituted. So that's the hydrogen that's going to go. The methoxide, the strong base, is going to attack that hydrogen. The carbon-hydrogen electrons are going to become carbon-carbon electrons in a double bond. The iodine is going to fall off as a leaving group. And we will get this alkene. That alkene, we are wanting to put the OH group in this spot. That's going to be Markovnikov addition. The hydrogen will go here with uh, the other hydrogen that's already present. And in this case, we're going to be making a tertiary carbocation. When we put the hydrogen over here, we're going to be putting a, a positive charge on this tertiary carbon. So we can go ahead and use the friendly water and sulfuric acid reagents. Remember, this is an equilibrium reaction, even though I'm not drawing it that way. And we get our desired product.